I've seen people hang gutters up before and they didn't need shooting belts. Yeah, but was it on a cabin? Gutters on cabins, completely different than gu gutters on houses. I finished that video a couple days ago, probably the last video where we were, we set up that super long range shot, the whatever it was, 165 yard handgun shot with a 22. And then we did the shoot from the hip. And I, I think I was talking a little bit about this uh, little tiny silencer on here. They get crazy dirty inside. They're kind of hard to clean. You're not supposed to do this, but I had to soak it for like two days. Don't tell anybody. Then I got in there with an engraver. It's got that real sharp little tip and just barely touched the chunks of lead and unburnt powder and stuff and just chipped it all out. Because it was not usable for the last couple days, I haven't uh, tried either of those shots again. So I gotta do that real quick. And then we really need to put a gutter on this cabin. Got a fair amount of rain yesterday, so I was locked inside. And man, did this window get splashed a lot. As you all know, we're working on a doghouse out here. There are no gutters anywhere on the cabin. So the water runs up here, hits this roof, splashes on that window, which will of course ruin the window eventually if you don't clean it all the time. But it also sucks in the summer when you got that window open. Maybe you get an afternoon uh, thunderstorm, you don't think about it, you come in and anything inside that window is wet. Like I've had my little tub of uh, memory cards for my camera and stuff in there, full of water. Quite a while ago, I picked up a gutter, a downspout, and a whole bunch of parts. I don't know if this is gonna work or not, because like everything out here, I've never done this before. The guy at, uh, I think it was Lowe's, helped me uh, pick all these parts out. What we dreamt up together seemed pretty straightforward. This is about, I think, the easiest gutter you could put on any structure. It's just straight across there. The cool thing is, if it lives through the winter, we might be able to use the water that comes off the roof for something. I'm not sure what yet. Honestly, I've been thinking for years about making an ice track that maybe goes slightly downhill here, and then there's the big drop down there. So perhaps we could capture the water for that. I don't know. For now, we just need to get the gutter up there. Before we do that, let's, let's just go have a look down here at something real quick. Like I said, I haven't done this since you saw me shooting at it. But in the last video, we put up this 16-inch uh, steel target so that you could stand right here and practice. Didn't see that one. Oh, you know what? You're not supposed to stand right here. Remember why? I'm supposed to stand over here in this little spot I trimmed out of all the saplings. Because if you stand on the other side and you happen to miss that thing, we're putting a bunch of bullets in that tree which we might have to remove eventually. I don't think that bullets and chainsaws mix very well. I don't know, I could be wrong. Let's try it over here. I swear this is a gutter video. This has, this video has nothing to do with shooting. Like every ringworm video, it's all about what's the most fun thing to do right now. There it is. Whoa, that was weird. Got a nice boom and crack when it hit the ground. Didn't sound like a, a ricochet sound. That one did ricochet off the ground and hit the plate. That counts though. Aha! There it is. All right, all right, I get it. You'd rather see how a modern man diverts water from a roof. Well, there's this other thing though. Oh no, gotta do my workouts too. We're about uh, halfway down this long distance range. I don't know if you can see the red target back in there. If you walk by here, you have to do a set of whatever exercise you want. If you walk by this line and you happen to have a gun belt on, you gotta take a few shots. This is kind of cheating. It's only 70 yards or so. Oh, I missed. There's a loud one. We got one mag left. Let's go back to, uh, how far was it? 
165 yards, I think. Oh, it's a good thing I walked out here. Seems that I may have left my machete. I wish I could remember how high we were shooting these. Oh, last one. Okay, gotta hit this, gotta hit this. And then we'll get to work. Dagnabbit. What were we supposed to do today? Just shoot a bunch? I can't remember. I thought this week's video was gonna be uh, training Kuiper on a uh, pulling harness. I did get the harness. I haven't even opened it yet, and I'm not going to, till we get the uh, dog back and the camera rolling. He's such a spaz, I think it's actually gonna be entertaining just to put it on him. I just need like three good days in a row, and then I'll go get him. It's a long freaking drive to Sarah's and back, so I gotta be feeling tip top. Y you really don't wanna be standing out here with a bunch of empty magazines. So this is uh, a little bit weird to say, but I, I think the gutter's gonna go up fine. And I also think it's gonna last only a matter of months before it gets ripped off of there. I don't know how many people watching this saw the entire cabin build, but because I had to make this weird, slightly vaulted ceiling inside the cabin, the insulation in the roof is not quite standard. I do get some pretty serious ice dams on the roof. I think I remember a couple years ago showing me chipping with Ryobi tools, of course, the huge ice sheets off the roof of the man cave. You remember there's no insulation in there at all, and then it's got that little weird propane sheet metal heater in there. So if you actually do hang out in there a bit and it's cold and it's snowy, the snow melt slides down. And then once it gets over the eaves here, if whoa, look at that big old wasp nest. Can you see it up there? Yeesh. Weirdly, I haven't seen any wasps around here. Anyway, you got a warm building, heats the snow up, slides down, snow, ice, water, gets over the eaves, and then it's above something really cold, it refreezes, and you get a huge chunk of ice all the way across there. I use some pretty powerful battery-powered chiseling action to break it all up and get it off which is it's quite fun if you're careful and you don't accidentally put the chisel through uh you know the roof or at very least the shingles but the exact same thing happens here on the cabin no insulation here but i have a feeling that that ice and the first few months of winter is going to just rip this gutter right off I think there are ways to just on top of the roof kind of divert the water or divert the ice to kind of go off of one end. But to my untrained eyes and mind when I check that stuff out, I was like, yeah, it's going to be basically the same problem. But before we get started, let's see what we got here. Nine feet, ten feet. <laughs> Two ten foot gutters. Here's another thing I had to guess on was the downspout. Wow, that's gonna be close. I think that'll actually work. Right, because the gutter's there, and then you've got an elbow that goes in, another elbow, and then you've got 10 feet, and then an elbow, and it comes out and gravity feeds. And here's our 10 feet right here. So we're actually at like 11 feet. Once again, it's almost like I thought this through and planned it. I think that's gonna be just right. I'm assuming that gets jammed in there. And it goes like, yeah, this probably gets cut down. This goes like, yeah. Yeah, that was another thing I didn't know is how far the roof hung over, but this is plenty enough. Here's some, uh, what are these, patch pieces or something? Yep, seamer kit. So any places the gutter comes together, I guess you just bottom up. This goes around, what, the outside or the inside? I'm thinking the outside. Guy sent me with the whole uh, cock tube full of goop too. So let's say this is at the left end of the roof. There's a cap for the end. Then we got a 10 foot section here with one of these. 
get another one of these to hook it to the second 10 foot section. Oh, there's another cap for the other end. Holy schmoly, it almost seems like we got everything. We got a whole box full of hangers. They go just like this. Looks like this would go inside here. Yep. Probably got at least a dozen in there, if not more. So, seems perfect to me. Got a stack of these guys. These are for fancy people to bend and attach the downspout to the house, I'm pretty sure. Cabin, different. It's a cabin. We're using a handgun, so it's a cabin. Keep that in mind. I think that's it. Now, I assume you gotta make the gutter a little bit like this so the water will run. That would be a reasonable thing to look up, like how much it has to tilt in order to get the water to move like you want it to. I can't imagine it's very much though. 20 feet, what if we just did like a half inch or an inch every 10 feet? Maybe that's way too much. Which brings me to another thing. Uh-oh, all my crap's blown away. This is completely off subject, but <laughs> you're used to this by now. I've been considering getting Starlink out here. Most days, I have enough cell signal, like two bars of cell signal, that you could watch YouTube videos. You can't do like high quality and you can't skip a bunch, or you have to wait for it to think and think and think. Every time we reel and pull down the movie theater and try to stream a movie every time, I think it actually waits for the most gripping parts of the movie and then stops and thinks and thinks. None of it was a big deal when I was just living in a tent for a couple of years, of course, then you get, you build yourself a cabin and then you need all the luxuries of life. But being screwed up for close to half a year with pretty severe back problems, it really would have been nice to have good internet. But I haven't been able to do Starlink because my batteries in here aren't big enough to run that thing all the time. Not that I'd use it all the time. I asked my good friends that live on their boat down in Mexico. Hey Jody, hey Randy, if you're watching how long it takes to boot up their Starlink system, and I think they said a couple minutes. So it draws somewhere between 50 and 100 watts, which, I mean, it's not a ton, but if you live on small batteries, it's not something you're gonna leave turned on all day. Your batteries would be, be dead in a day. So there's a chance, a chance. I might see if I can get some new, bigger Jackery batteries, which is gonna be a cool other project because I'm gonna have to cut out part of the cabin and build in their own pop-out, kind of like the doghouse. The point is, if I wanted to look all this stuff up, ooh, or sit down on the computer and do it without using a phone as a hotspot, which is incredibly frustrating and slow, I could flip on the Starlink and do it like a normal person. I don't like to look anything up when I'm building, just because I think it's more fun to try to figure it out on your own. And since I've been out here, I've gotten in the habit of that. But sometimes, things like this, there is kind of a right answer to how much run you put in your gutters. It would also be really nice to have some non-paperback book entertainment when you've spent, in total, a couple months of being laid up. Man, how did we get talking about this? We should get back to shooting. I mean, uh, guttering. What? What's that? Oh, you want to keep talking about the uh, batteries and the Starlink? Let's just, let's take a quick look. There is actually no place in the cabin to put these batteries. The only spot is by the couch where my Jackery 2000 is right now. But the way things are set up now, when Sarah comes to visit, we fold the other side of the bed out. You have to take that battery, put it on the floor. That's not going to work with either a stack of batteries or one very tall battery. The couch is here. I think it goes to here. I think it's these two studs. You'd have to cut all of this out and then add a roof. Roof, wait, roof, roof. It's a roof because it's a cabin. It's a roof if it's a dog house. Yeah, the roof would go either just over the batteries here, or I suppose it could go all the way up to there and come out. It'd be cool if we did that, because we could make the top of that pop out like bookshelves or something. I don't know. How to calculate gutter slope. Ha! 
half inch per 10 feet. What did I, oh, maybe I said one inch. <laughs> I'm tempted to just measure down from like the edge of the shingles or the drip edge, you know, half inch at halfway down, one inch at the other end, because I honestly don't want to know if this thing is still level. There's a very good chance that one or three or five or all of these concrete pads that I poured for the feet of the cabin have settled. God, do we want to know? I really don't want to know. You know, it's kind of like going to the doctor or the dentist. If you go and they tell you there's something wrong, that really sucks. But if you don't go, you're fine. Well, we are very level end to end, so that's good. I'm really confused. Remember, here at the Worm, we always show our mistakes. There's something not right. I pulled the string end to end, and it looks pretty freaking good. However, if you stand at the end down here and sight down the shingles or the drip edge, it goes down and back up pretty considerably. If you sight down one of these cracks, it does the same thing. So it looks like the cabin's settling in the middle. But if you string it on just half the roof, this is dead on. Uh, okay, that's even more confusing. Strung it up on only this side, it's dead on again. I can explain why the siding, the line in the siding would go like this. If you got a big board, you snap a line, cut one side off. Sometimes it relieves pressure in the board one way or the other. So that by the time you got that cut off, the board's actually bent a little bit. You do the other side, it can make it even worse or go the other way. So you nail it down, you nail it down, you pull one side down, and that can kind of get accentuated going up the cabin. And actually, if you sight down any of these lines, they're really pretty straight. This one here looks like it has a little sag. This one here looks like it goes the other way. Let's see how you're supposed to do this. Be kind of cool if it was at the end like that. And you could just put the cap on, but then the spout's going to nowhere. Or put this right in line, have it come down like that. I could cut a chunk out of one of the long gutters and put it there, but I don't have an extra piece to connect them. I only have one, two of them for over there. Yeah, I think we do that. Guess we have to start at that side to get our down slope, huh? Yeah, we do. We can't just guess here because we got that weirdness in the roof. 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 Look what I found. I had in the back of my head that this was laying around here. I don't have any idea why I have it, where it came from, or anything. I don't know if you've noticed, but there's a slight color variation. And it looks like it has these little tabs in here so you can actually tuck the gutter in. We're gonna use it. And I have a rusty old can of spray paint from the early 1940s. Let's see, does that take the gloss off? I think so. I won't be surprised if uh, this paint peels off in six months, but we're gonna do it anyway. If you weren't so obsessively into projects like I am, you'd take the time and go get another. But I'm not getting in the car for hours for that. <sighs> just use our tack cloth there real quick. Oh, I was just gonna say, let's hope this can's never been used. But there's very little chance it comes out of there. It does, look at that. Not too sure what order you're supposed to do all this in, but I don't see any reason not to put this end plate on right now. Maybe we do it again on the inside, huh? Yeah, that definitely feels better. So tell me, did you get last week's video on time? It's really important for me to know that right now. It's another rainy, fantastic, cool day, and it's already noon because I'm hustling to get last week's video out. But if you tell me now that it came out, then I don't have to stress about it anymore. Oh yeah, it'll just, it'll just happen, right? Ryan, you've used that joke before. I know, but this is my life. Trying to get one video out shooting the, you don't have to worry about it. The good thing is it's either done or it's not and there's nothing I can do about it now. You don't want to get the inside of a gutter wet. I don't know if you knew that or not. 
I'm a professional, just trust me. Just spent a good 10 minutes puzzling over where I could have possibly left my hammer. I'm thinking we could put this end up. We're gonna have to have that float because we gotta glue it, right? Put that one down close to the end, I suppose. Maybe sup my cat. It's actually a really cool design. As you tighten this, this gets squished and it kind of pulls this side up, I think. Yeah. Look at, watch this go up. Huh. Wow, I'm actually surprised how much support that has for just a few little screws. Color definitely doesn't match, but we're okay with that. All right, we're gonna try to figure out how you hold this up there and glue it and attach it. So, looks like you can kind of Feed that in there and then squish it down. And then we'll put that one we painted in the middle of the long sections. We gotta remember to subtract, yeah, an inch out of there for that part. Okay, so we'll go about there. And then we need another seven inch piece for there. Seven. seven. Let's just guess here, eyeball it. As well hook a few pieces together. See if we can hold it together while we put it up there. Is this how you're supposed to do it? like the smell of that stuff. It's like uh, rubber cement. It's not perfectly made, is it? See the little funkies in there? I guess it's not the end of the world if a little bit of water sits in there. Okay, you know what I'm wondering now? This is a sealant. It doesn't say anything about adhesive. How's that supposed to stay together? You're gonna clearly have to put a hanger on the end here. Maybe that's it. Seems like you're still gonna get flexing and stuff. You know what we could do is put a little uh, self-tapping, couple self-tapping screws in there. Maybe one or two through there, that would hold it together. It's all a bit confusing if you're not that smart. We got some screws. Maybe that's what they're for. I was actually thinking these were the straps that go around the downspout just to screw them into the walls. I don't know. We could look it up, but we're not gonna. I think I'm gonna use these. I mean, this seems reasonable, doesn't it? Yeah, sure does. Not sure about this part, though. Didn't seem like it would hurt anything, except you'd have a head back there. Well, let's just do it. Yeah, you definitely uh, could rip your hand open on those uh, cleaning it out later, but I like that. I like a little danger in my life. Oh, this stuff is rubber cement. It's uh, crazy. It's already dried enough it doesn't stick to your fingers. Well, I guess we might as well goop the inside of this now. It's not going to get all over the place. So I'm wondering with this guy, if you need to put the uh, adhesive in there, uh, the sealant rather, it does fit on there pretty frickin' tightly. The water would have to go down and make a U-turn. I don't know, I'm thinking maybe we just squirt some in here, jam them together and call it good. If you don't have to use the sealant, it'd make this way easier to put together using these. 
Yeah, actually, I don't feel like this is necessary. That's good. See, isn't that a nice piece? You know what I should do? I'm gonna have Sarah climb up here and paint something on that one. Maybe like a ringworm or a skull and crossbones or something cool. All right, so that's just kind of held on there. That's about our uh, one inch down there. Let's see if we can sight down this thing. It's hard to tell because there's a little bit of a weird jog in it where they come together. It actually looks pretty good, doesn't it? Yeah, drop it an extra quarter. I think that's gonna be good. Be a little bit amazed if I can get this together with one hand. Nope. I got it, I got it, don't drop it now. <laughs> oh, you bastard. Can't slide the uh, holder uppers on from the end anymore. Uh, I think I can flex it. <laughs> yes. I just found a whole crate of stuff left over from party week. And by stuff, I mean chips and junk food. Totally made my day. Freaking love these things. Chili cheese. I think that's gonna do. It looks quite straight. All right, we gotta figure this uh, downspout here. It's gonna run down this guy. We got the propane there. I was interested to see how relatively well this is still holding up. I think that's supposed to be inside a wall, but this is just how I put it together. And I saw this rusting. I mean, I knew it was going to rust because it's outdoors, but I, I have some stuff to put on here. You know, that uh, garbage that's supposed to turn oxidation into titanium or kryptonite or something. Well, like a million other things, I just haven't gotten around to doing it. Anyway, I think we're just going to have to put some standoff blocks on here every now and then going up. Got a little scrap of uh, one inch cedar here. You can see that's the end of the board that when I milled it, it's got that little edge on it. So we'll just knock that off real quick. Hey, that's not bad. I'm guessing the water flows that way so you don't have to seal anything. So, you don't want it to just fall out of there. I'd rather the water doesn't all pool right here, but what are we gonna do about it? You know what would've been kinda cool? is to take this if it was a little bit longer and wrap it around the side of the building and have it all come out, I don't know, somewhere downhill. I thought that was a, a tree leaf. I was gonna say we don't have that brand around here. Oh, looky there. I'm always keeping an eye out for maples because I don't have too many maples here. I'm gonna have to come and uh, trim all these little suckers away from it, see if we can get an actual maple tree growing. I don't know if I mentioned it before, but there's a reason I'm leaving all these little aspen saplings here. 
They're actually just about to the size I need, and I haven't figured out exactly what I'm going to do with them, but they're so plentiful, they're quite flexible, and they grow really fast. So I'm going to take some of these around here and weave them into some bizarre stuff. Like these three right here, I think it would be kind of cool to bring them together, twist them, and see if I can get them all to grow into basically one tree. I'd like to take some of them up in the front of the cabin and bend them over and try to make uh, like a walkway. And the aspens are really, really trunky trees. Most of the mass is in the trunk. You know, they go straight up, get up really high, and then you have the crown. But it still might be possible to cut this off here and leave two branches and try to get them trained out a long ways before they come back up. Then you've got a pre-made platform for something bizarre. And these have all popped up only since I cleared this area for the cabin. So, you know, at most they're two years old. They're like uh, 12 or 15 feet high, some of them. With any luck, this maple tree will survive the winter and maybe it'll be here longer than this cabin is. So you just gotta make it uh, four to five years there. This is perfect, or would be perfect training for Kuiper. Since there's no weight to it, we just bundle all these together, put a pulling harness on them and have them drag this over to the fire pit. He just has to get used to something being pulled behind him and the noise of it, which I'm sure is going to freak him out. So maybe day after tomorrow I'll go get him back. We can start his training. I, I know, I'm getting sidetracked again. This always happens. I probably shouldn't say this, but uh, I've been looking a little bit online for a really cheap backhoe of some sort. I got a couple projects that I just can't do by hand out here. Harbor Freight sells this little bitty one that you, I mean, you hook up to your lawn tractor or your four-wheeler. It's basically like wheels, two outriggers, and then the bucket and a seat. That's the whole thing. And it's actually quite affordable, but I was just thinking if I did have one of those, we could pretty easily use the water that comes off the roof here and cut a little uh, channel through here and use that to go down the hillside, turn that all into ice. There's a good chance it wouldn't work at all, but it'd be really fun to try. I think I'd feel better about this if I made most of these parts myself. Certainly the straps we could have figured out. Probably could have made some cool uh, gutters out of cedar too. Uh, it's that time of year you're trying to get everything done before it snows. But I know it. I cheated. I think we're gonna do this for now. Nothing's permanent. Just got the shovel out. I was gonna dig a little trench to get the water to flow out of here. I kind of wonder if I could get this root out of here, root ball. Be kind of a cool place for the water to run into. It almost reaches. Well, we'll make it reach. That's going to do it. Well, when I'm feeling better or when I get heavy equipment, we'll do something fun with this. Thinking with one good rain, it's going to fill this up pretty quick. Unless, I don't know, maybe, maybe a lot of it will sink in. But all we really need to do is trough it from there to about there. And the water can make it out there. I hate to leave this. I kind of want to do that right now. It's only a few feet, but it's not worth it. It's not worth the risk. I mean, all this water went somewhere before the gutter was on there, so not like the whole place is going to float away overnight. Oh, we got one more thing to finish up here. Now it's done. There it is. 
<laughs> Had to start a fire. I'm trying to get rid of some thistle. I had one sled full. Look at this. It's a solid mass. There's probably 40 pounds of thistle that I dug up yesterday. And this was just from a little tiny area right in front of the man cave because this stuff has taken over really just this year. I think last year or perhaps it was the year before I let a couple of the plants go and I'd love to stand there by it, not move and just watch like dozens of different kind of bugs, flies, bees, you name it, were on there. But this place right here in front of the man cave has gotten so lousy with them that like Kuiper would not walk over here, which I don't freaking blame him. So I just chopped them all off in this area, put them in the sled. Yeah, it's basically just this spot right here. It's like solid mats of thistle. Just like the aspens, it's got an underground root system where the roots go out laterally, then they pop up. So I don't know if chopping down a few of them last year, I think they are perennial too, but maybe it's because I chopped a few of them off last year at the wrong time and the root system remained and now I've got just a floor of them. But this whole huge area here around the cabin, I cleaned out I think just before I got Kuiper so he'd have a place to crap. And what do you know, he won't use this area. That's because they're just masses everywhere you look. But you know what I was thinking we should do? Let's, uh, let's keep a leaf and put it under the microscope. Oof. Yeah, I bet they're gnarly. Am I gonna die breathing the smoke from those things? Imagining lungs full of hypodermic needles. Oh yeah, you guys probably want to see too, don't you? Or you just want me to give you a verbal description? Alright, let's see what this little horror show looks like. It looks synthetic. It doesn't look like something would really grow that way. Let's try the back. Black, oh yeah, the black back back black ground. Just like last time. Click one photo and the whole thing crashes. Much simpler to use anyway. Oh yeah. It's almost better, isn't it? Yeah, gosh, those really don't look like prickers. That looks like a pricker. Yeah, it looks way more like fur or like roots or something than thorns on the bottom there. I'm starting to get the feeling that we've looked at these before under the microscope. Wow, the leaf itself looks like a mix between leather and bubble wrap. All the hairs or thorns or whatever on the top of the leaf look like you'd expect, and on the bottom, they look like icicles, like they're made of glass or something. Weird. I don't know if that's just the reflection off the back plate, the white surface there or not. That's cray cray. God, look at that. So weird. Okay, you take a shower. I'm gonna eat, no, I'll, I'll do both. I'm gonna shower and eat dinner. There's a slight chance of rain tonight, so maybe we'll check in the morning, see if our hole's filled up. Hey, the windows didn't get splashed. That's fantastic. And the hole didn't fill up. Looks like we didn't get that much rain. Well, it didn't wash the leaves out too well. I'm leaving in just a few hours to go get Kuiper. I really want to get on the road right now before it gets too late. But as always, I'm behind on my name, my name carvings. You know what? I'm not really behind on this. You got to expect if you start donating on Patreon, expect, I don't know, six months or something. 
it's kind of a long turnaround. But there's a few of you. You're gonna be you're you're there. My guess is that this is not gonna set up at all. <laughs> and it's probably gonna get rained on tonight, but we're okay with that, right? Just need to get some names on here, fix the table later. That looks nice. You know, I was thinking if I'm able to get this little uh, backhoe loader thing, depending on which one I got, I might not have to lift logs anymore. Maybe I could get back to working on the kitchen. I'm sure it's a bad idea, but uh, I don't know, we'll see. Gotta see where I am financially once I pay off all my frickin' doctor bills. Anyway, we can train Kuiper for free, we can poke him with sticks, we can have all sorts of fun around here. Thanks for watching, thanks for supporting me. You know I appreciate it a hell of a lot. See you next week. We'll be doing, God, we'll be doing something fun. Probably better than gutters.